Hi everyone, I am Miss Savage. I am going to be teaching you drama this half term and I am super excited to get started. I've planned a really wonderful lesson for you today with lots of movement, hopefully lots of energy. We are going to start every drama lesson with a warm up. We're gonna do some stretching, do some movement, start creating some actions so that we're nice and ready for our main task later on in the lesson. Our first warm up then is just a little bit of stretching. We are going to start stretching our upper body and then we're going to move down to our legs so that we're completely ready for any actions that we're going to do today. So we're gonna start by just moving our head to the side, back to the middle and to the other side and back to the middle, once more to the one side, to the middle and to the other side and back to the middle. We're gonna roll our shoulders backwards to get our necks and shoulders nice and loose for the lesson and then we're gonna roll them forwards, nice big circles right up to your ears, up to your ears all the way down, up to your ears all the way down. We're gonna shake out one arm, give it a really good shake, feel all the tension from your arms leaving you and the other arm. Good, we're gonna circle our hips. Big circle motion of your hips, really wide, as wide as you can go, imagine you're hula hooping. You've got a big giant hoop that you need to keep going. And the other way, keep circling those hips, nice big circles. And then we're gonna shake out our legs. So just like our arms, shake out your legs for me, try and balance, wobble wobble, and your other leg. Shaky, 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 and then have an all over body shake. <laughs> the next warm up activity that we are going to do is one that you perhaps already know from previously doing it in lessons. It is called the bean routine. So if you know it, amazing. If not, I'll give you a quick recap before we start. So there are so many beans, so many different types of beans in the world, and we are going to try and be each one of those beans. So the first bean that we are going to be is the string bean. So string bean is really tall, really skinny, hands up right up in the air, up on your tippy toes if you can, super stretch, keep yourself super skinny and this is the string bean. So when I shout out string bean this is the action that I'm looking for. The next bean, completely the opposite bean, it is called the broad bean. So this bean, you need to make yourself as wide as you can, stretch your legs wide, stretch your arms wide. It's gonna be a big fat broad bean. Okay, so when I shout out broad bean, this is the action that I am looking for. The third bean we have is the runner bean. Can you tell me what the runner bean's action is going to be? Of course, so runner bean, we're running on the spot as fast as you can. Okay, so we have the string bean, the broad bean, and the runner bean, amazing. We're going to add three more beans to give us our full set. The next bean that we are going to do is the magic bean. Okay, so with the magic bean, you need to crouch down and curl yourself up into the smallest ball that you can. When I shout magic bean, you're gonna make yourself really small. I'm gonna cast my magic spell and you're going to grow into a big, beautiful, magical bean. Okay, so magic bean, really small, growing into a big magic bean. Two more, one is beans on toast. This one's quite interesting. Beans on toast, lying flat on the floor, on your back, all the way down and then jumping up when I shout the next bean. So beans on toast, all the way down, and all the way up again. And the last bean that we are going to do, very popular bean, this one, is the jelly bean. What do you think the jelly bean is going to move like? Excellent, a jelly bean. Cool, so we have the string bean, the broad bean, then we have the runner bean, then we've got the magic bean, the beautiful bean, the beautiful magic bean. Then we have the beans on toast on the floor, 
jumping back up. And lastly, we have the jelly bean. So for this activity, I am going to shout out one of the beans. I want you to do the action, but I want you to do the action as big as you can. Really over exaggerate your movements, make it really clear. This is all about warming up. So making sure that we're using lots of energy to show each of these beans. We're gonna do two rounds of this. First one is a practice round, and then the second one, we're gonna go through them a lot quicker. So for round one, your first bean is the runner bean. Running on the spot, really quickly, quicker, quicker, quicker. All about warming up, a magic bean. Really back to the runner bean. And string bean. Good, really tall, really skinny. And broad bean. Good, and magic bean. And beans on toast. And jelly bean. We do a cool sound effect here for your jelly bean. And runner bean. And string bean. And that's our magic bean. Ooh, beautiful beans. Wonderful. Give yourselves a round of applause for that first one. And well done for using as much energy as you can. This should get you super warm. You should already feel the energy flowing through you, ready for drama. We're going to do our bean routine once more. I'll do the beans in a different order and I'm going to shout them out much quicker. And I'm not going to remind you of the action. So this is all on you. Are you ready? Here we go. Three. Two, one, magic bean, runner bean, beans on toast, string bean, beans on toast, string bean, jelly bean, runner bean, broad bean, runner bean. Jelly bean, beans on toast, string bean, broad bean, string bean, broad bean, jelly bean, and relax. Well done guys, give yourselves a round of applause for being the best beans that you could possibly be. For our first task, we are going to look at the drama skill facial expressions. Facial expressions are super important in drama because they help the actor or the storyteller portray and show to the audience or to the listeners exactly what their character is feeling. So we're going to spend a little bit of time doing some really focused work on facial expressions and showing emotion. Make yourself comfortable. You can either stay standing or you can grab a chair to sit on or you can sit on the floor. We're just going to focus on our faces for now. When we talk about emotions, we talk about all of the things that we feel inside at different times and how we portray these, how we show these using our faces. So using our eyebrows, using our eyes, using our noses perhaps, and using our mouths. Okay, so all of these features of our faces are super important to think about. First thing, I want you to focus your mind. Just take a deep breath in for me, right into your tummy, fill yourself up with oxygen and then breathe out. So just calming ourselves and feeling a little bit more focused. I am going to give you an emotion and I want you to think about how you would show that on your face. So the first emotion is happy. How would you show happy on your face? I'm expecting big smiles, wider eyes. Okay, you might raise your eyebrows perhaps, a combination of happy and excited possibly. So I'm expecting to see a big smile at least. Good. The next emotion that I want you to show is confused. How would you show confused? 
okay? So I've kind of used my top of my body, my shoulders to help you, but if I didn't have that, I have a different mouth shape. I perhaps pointed my eyebrows in, in a kind of curious, confused sort of face. Show me your best confused face, go. Good, good, good. Okay, the next emotion that I want you to show on your face is excited. Excited, really wide mouth, big eyes. Show me your excited faces. Good, very different from your confused face. Okay, I'm gonna give you another emotion and this emotion is scared. What do you think your facial expression would be if you were scared? What would your eyes be doing? What would your mouth be doing? Would you be looking straight at what you're scared at? Would you kind of be cowering away? Would you be looking away? Would you have your eyes open? I know if I'm watching a scary movie, I definitely close my eyes because I'm really scared. Okay, so do your best scared face for me in three, two, one, go. Good, some good, really scared faces. Some good, interesting eyes and thinking about your mouth shape as well to portray scared. Okay, I'm gonna give you another emotion and this one is sleepy, tired. How do you think your face would express tiredness or sleepiness? Okay, do your best tired face for me, go. Awesome. Amazing. As you can tell just from that really brief activity, there's lots of different ways that we can use our face to express emotion. And in today's main task, I'm going to do some storytelling and I'm going to ask you to be adding in some facial expressions for each of the characters and each of the emotions that we encounter as we go through this story. The next task that we're going to do is something completely different. Again, this is going back to our movement. So if you're sitting down, jump up off your chair, up you get standing up nice and tall, ready to do a bit more movement so that we don't get all tired and have our bodies cool down. We're going to focus on some animals. The story that we're going to look at today is called Giraffes Can't Dance. And it has lots of animal characters in it. And I thought it would be a really nice idea to prepare us for the story by thinking about movements of different animals. This is another really awesome drama skill, which is our body movement. So to match our facial expressions, we need to have body movements or what we call gestures. Okay, so we've got facial expressions with our emotions and with our bodies, we've got what we call gestures so that it, it tells the audience even more about our character. So I'm going to give you a couple of animals and I want you to think about how each of these animals are going to move or if they have a particular action that you can give each of the animals. So the first animal is going to be a hippo, a hippopotamus, okay? Let's think about what a hippo looks like, really big. So kind of like our broad bean, we need to make ourselves really big. Now, is a hippo going to move fast or slowly? Remember, it's really big, probably quite slowly, okay? So we make sure you've got a little bit of space in front of you or at least space that you can move on the spot. We're gonna move like a hippo. Bum, 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 bum. I'm gonna give my hippo a sound effect because why not, eh? So, bum, 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 bum. Good. Show me your hippo movements or your hippo action in three, two, one, go. Awesome. Okay, we are going to move on to another animal. And seeing as our story is about a giraffe today, let's have a giraffe. What does a giraffe look like? I always think giraffes are super grand and elegant, super tall, a bit like our string bean. What a coincidence. So super tall for our giraffe, they've got a really long neck. Okay, you might want to use your hand 
uh, with your arm to represent a really long neck. You might just want to put your chin forward, you might want to walk on your tiptoes, okay? Giraffe takes long strides perhaps, so we might want to use our arms, so our arms can be our gesture. Let's have you walking around your space like a giraffe. You might want to add your own giraffe sound effects. I'm not sure if giraffes even make a noise. I've never heard one. Okie dokie. Um, let's have another animal, something a little bit different. Ooh, I know, this is super different. How about a bee, a big bumblebee? How would we represent a bumblebee? Okay, they're super small, all right? In comparison to a giraffe or a hippo, they're super small. So we're gonna have to make ourselves really small. Now we can't potentially crouch down because we still need to move around. We still need to create a gesture and an action for our bee. So I'm just gonna crouch a little lower. I'm gonna tuck my arms in, or maybe I'll have some like little wings for my little bee. Um, a bee has a sound. What is the sound that a bee makes? Bzzz. Okay, so my whole B action or gesture to represent a B. I'm gonna crouch down, make myself a little smaller so I look different to a hippo. Um, I'm gonna tuck my arms in, but I'm gonna use my hands. I'm gonna have a hand gesture to represent the wings and I'm gonna kind of like scuttle. I'm gonna scurry around a little bit like a bee with my buzzing sound. So you've got a B gesture to show. Off you go in three, two, one, go. Amazing, cool. So we've got a hippo, giraffe, a bee. Let's add in a, another one. Let's think about how a kangaroo. How would a kangaroo move? They have a pretty distinctive movement, a kangaroo. They have a pretty unique way of traveling around. Quite energetic, so I'm gonna um, have some kangaroo legs here, little bouncy legs to represent my bouncy movement. And kangaroos, they obviously jump around, don't they? Again, you might want to add a sound effect. It doesn't have to be a kangaroo noise. Um, think of a jumping sound. Shout out your kangaroo sound effect for me. Go. Boing. Okay, cool. So we've got kangaroo and boing, 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 boing. Amazing. So lots of kangaroo movement. So if I walked into a room jumping like that with my boing sound effect, most people, I'd like to think, would know that I'm pretending to be a kangaroo. And that is the point of this task. We're going to have one more. Can you shout out for me another animal that we can do? There are so many. Shout out another animal for me. Oh, how about a snake? Okay, think about a gesture for a snake. So obviously we can't necessarily lie on the floor and crawl around on our bellies because we've got to act and we might have to be telling our story at the same time. So we just need a gesture, just a simple movement to represent our snake. What do you think we could do? Have a think about that. Have a think about how we could show a snake. I've definitely got a sound effect for a snake. I bet you do too. Okay. My gesture for snake is going to be this. So I'm gonna whirl around like a snake and obviously my sound effect is going to be like a snake. Can you show me your snakes, boys and girls? Can you show me your snake gesture? Wonderful. Some really good work so far today. There have been two very different activities for us and hopefully they are going to help us with the next part of our lesson. Give yourself a huge round of applause for all of the work that you've done so far today. Well done. And now we are going to move in to the main task and our storytelling section of today's lesson. Boys and girls, I am going to tell you the story of Giraffes Can't Dance. It's one of my favourites. In the story, there are lots of different animals. So as we go through, you can create some more animal gestures of your own to act out. There's a little bit of dancing in the story, so you might wanna to choose to do some of the movements as we go through. 
you might want something a little bit more chill because you feel worn out from our previous activity so feel free to get a chair sit down on the floor and you can work on your facial expression so you can think about how each of the characters might use their faces to show their emotions so you can either act out the characters in the story do some actions or you can choose to do facial expressions and focus on that part Here's a story of giraffes can't dance. Remember, facial expressions and gestures. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. So he was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees, wobbly knees for buckling. Now, every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. And have a sad facial expression for Gerald, it was called. The warthog started waltzing, and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions, ah, there's my gesture for lions, Arr, danced a tango, that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely. Brave facial expression for Gerald. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey look at clumsy Gerald! The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right. He thought I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. Alone and sad face for Gerald. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, <coughs> coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. So you could gesture for a little cricket, like a little insect character. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees, to the sweetest music is in those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing his hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. Think of all these movements that we can do for Gerald and moving. He threw his arms out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. Oh, I'm dancing! Yes, I am dancing! I am dancing! Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied and watched him quite entranced. Do an entranced face. Ooh, they shouted, it's a miracle! We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. Ooh, so lots of surprise for Gerald. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Bow for Gerald. I'm getting really good at dancing. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. Amazing. Give yourselves a huge round of applause, boys and girls, for all the work that you have done today, for your actions in the story, for your facial expressions, some really excellent drama work with a focus on our skills, facial expression 
and the other one beginning with G was gesture. Well done. I hope you've had a really good first lesson back for drama. I know I've had so much fun and I am really looking forward to seeing you all again next lesson. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.